we're up we're live hi everyone it's Nell with little yellow house crafts welcome back to my channel um, if you are new then welcome my name is Nell I'm a cross stitcher and this video is all about uh, cross stitch and what I do with that as well as um, a bag sale that's coming up so if you're here for that then welcome if you are returning welcome back thanks for joining me again uh, today is Monday June 26th and um, it's kind of a cloudy weird day outside so the lighting might be a little funky I'm sorry if that's the case but I can't I have to film today because a bag sale is coming up so I need to announce some things about that and so we're just gonna have to deal with bad lighting um, welcome to my live video. I'm sorry if the picture is a little grainy right now. It says there's a bad connection, but we're just going to carry on like we always do, and usually it, it gets better and fixes itself. So welcome. Good morning, Sylvia. Welcome, and thanks for joining me live. Um, let's talk first and foremost let's talk about the bag sale because I think a lot of you are going to be coming to this video to get that announcement, and so. I am ready to do another bag sale. Hallelujah, the last one we had was I think in November or December of last year. So it's been a while. Thanks for being patient with me while I've been getting back to sewing and we are ready. Um, I announced on my Facebook group um, last week uh, that the bags were ready. I'm still, I'm wrapping up the Grand Guards. They're almost done and so we are gonna be ready and the sale is going to be this Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central Time in the United States. So I will be making that announcement, putting a post in my Facebook group with all of those details. But just so you know, the bags will be going live on Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. my time. Um, are you guys ready for the themes? I know there's. you guys have been waiting. You've been so patient. Um, I don't uh, typically show my bags ahead of time because I like to keep an element of mystery and surprise, but I do announce the names of the bags. I title all of my bags just to kind of whet your appetite, give a little teaser as to what you can expect. Um, just for your information, these bags were all... Um, good morning, McKenna! Hey, how you doing? Uh, these fabrics for this bag release were all custom printed. I had um, fabrics custom printed for designs and kind of fandoms that I couldn't find fabrics for that I personally loved and I wanted to see more of. So because of that, there were, um, there were some extra costs um, associated with um, printing those custom fabrics. And just so you know this particular release the bags will cost a little bit more than usual um, I'm calling these a limited edition release this is these are fabrics that I'm not gonna print again so we will never see these bags in these patterns ever again um, and they will be a little more expensive the bitty bags the big bags will each be three dollars more a bag than usual and then the bigger bags and the biggest bags my two larger sizes will be four and five dollars more more respectively um, per bag so I will make sure to post the actual prices with the bags when they go up as I always do but there will um, they will reflect a slight price increase that is just for this release I am NOT permanently raising my prices that this is just for this particular release because the fabrics were custom printed and were fairly pricey so again bitty bags and big bags will be three dollars more each bigger bags and biggest bags will be four dollars more for the bigger bags and five dollars more for the biggest bags in this release only the grime guards will be the same price that they always were my grime guards are done in the coordinating fabrics not in the custom printed fabrics so they will be the same price that they always are so just so you know that will be the case and you don't need to expect them to be more expensive in the future that's just for this release now for the titles um we have let me count really quickly one two three, four, five, six, seven, seven different um, themes for these for this release. Um, there are 50 bags uh, spread among those seven different themes and these are the titles. Um, if you're a Doctor Who fan we have one bag that has a Doctor Who theme and a particularly a um, if you're a David Tennant 10th Doctor fan this bag release is called Allons-y 
So get excited for that. The second one, I don't think I need to give you any more information other than the title. It's called Yellow Brick Road. So let that sink in. Uh, the third one is called My Bookshelf. If we have any readers out there, any book lovers, there's a bag called My Bookshelf. The fourth one is probably, oh, I can't say it's my favorite because I love a lot of these, but this is one of my favorites for this release. It's called Ball at Netherfield. So get excited there um, if you're an Austin fan. Um, and then the last three all have to do with one particular fandom that has been my most highly requested fandom and is hard to find fabrics for. And you're gonna know by the time I give you these titles, but the last three, the first one is called Wizarding World. Second one is called The Daily Prophet. And the third one is called I Solemnly Swear. So let those sink in one more time. Uh, we have a bag called Allons-y. We have one called Yellow Brick Road. The next one is called My Bookshelf. Next one is called Ball at Netherfield. And then we have Wizarding World, The Daily Prophet, and I Solemnly Swear. So there are your teasers and your hints about what, um, sorry, I just had a notification. Yep, okay. Ooh. Sorry, I think it cut out. I think the live video cut out for a second, but I'm here. Sorry about that. My phone, I got a weird notification and it did something funky. Sorry, I'm here. If we lost you, welcome back. If we're still going, it looks like we're still going. So I hope that I don't I hope it didn't actually cut out. So there are your hints about the bags you can expect this Wednesday evening. I think it's going to be a great sale. I think you're going to love the the fabrics, especially the Doctor Who one you just mentioned. Oh, thanks Belinda. Yes, Belinda, you are one of my Doctor Who fans. Um yes, if you have never done a sale with me, you it's very important that you know what time the sale starts because my bags sell very very quickly, at least historically, that's been how it goes. So, if you have not joined my group, make sure you go to Facebook and search the group Little Yellow House Crafts. Request to join. I'll add you right away. Um, I don't like do any verifying or anything. I just want to make sure you're a real person and not a robot. Um, and then once you're on, when 7.30 comes around on Wednesday evening, you're going to want to hit refresh on your screen and the bags will start posting. The best way to see them is to go to photos and then go under albums because they will all post, hi Claudia, they will all post in albums. Um, I don't post individual photos. And when you claim a bag, it's like any other um, shopping site here on Facebook. Um, I know most of the needle minders, needle minder groups work this way, stash unload and a lot of the buy and sell and trade groups work this way where you need to claim and say me please or me or whatever you want to say, excuse me, on the individual photo of the bag that you're requesting. Um, if I have multiple bags in the same theme of the same size, I usually post them together and I make it really clear, you know, number one is this one with this color zipper and so you can select the one you want. So you say me please number two or if there's only one bag in the picture then just me or me please. And that's how it works, you need to be quick um, I, it, it gets a little crazy and I go by the timestamp. The first person who claims it is the first one that Facebook will list on the page. And so sometimes people will post almost at exactly the same time. I always go with the first one listed. So just know that, um, all the information about shipping and handling and information like that can be found on that Facebook group under the files section. So if you have questions about how much I charge for shipping, it's pretty easy. It's not too complicated, but go check that out before the sale. So you know what to expect. Also prices are listed under there. Just remember $3 more for bitty and big bags, and then $4 more for bigger and $5 more for biggest. So, I will see you all Wednesday night. Get your clicking fingers ready because it's gonna go quick. Um, that being said, we're now um, about nine and a half minutes in. So if that's what you were here for, thanks for joining me. Looking forward to seeing you. Um, 
catch your translation. Hello from Russia. Wow. Oh my goodness. I have just discovered a whole slew of um, Russian cross stitchers here on Floss Tube and I'm addicted. I don't understand a word they're saying, but I love to watch their videos. They're doing some beautiful things. So welcome from Russia. Um, Anyway, let's go on with stitching. So if you were just here for bags, thank you. We'll catch you next time. If you're here for my whip update and a little bit of haul and some plans, then stay tuned and let's keep going. I have done uh, quite a bit of stitching. I think the last time I was with you was maybe two, two and a half weeks ago. So it hasn't been quite as long as usual for my videos because I needed to post a bag update. Um, so let's talk about what I've been stitching. I have gotten quite a bit of stitching done Yes, on the Russian stitchers, right? Oh my gosh, I wish I spoke Russian because I'm sure I would get so much more out of it if I could understand what they were saying, but the stitching is beautiful and so inspiring. So keep going Russian stitchers. Um, let's just get into it. The first thing that I worked on was one of my uh, Stitch Mania starts and that was Knock Knock by the Prairie Schooler. Um, for Stitch Mania, I got most of this top bit done. Uh, this pumpkin and the ghost, I had not done this pumpkin yet. So it was just those two uh, sections that were finished. And I'll show you how far I got. I made pretty good progress on this one. Gotta get the one from last year out of the way. So here we are. So I finished the second pumpkin and I went down this side of the border all the way down, I think this is where the next um, corner pumpkin goes so I, I made it pretty far down and then I started on the second uh, second the center section um, with the house and so I'll show you the picture once more this is what it will look like and that is where I stand currently um, just as a refresher in case you're new I am stitching this on 25 count Lugana in ivory I believe and I'm stitching because it's 25 count I'm stitching this three over two I'm using three strands of DMC over two um, to get to make sure it's, it's nice and opaque because it's a it's a bigger count I'm stitching it on a bigger count because I wanted the the designs to be a little bigger than they're charted to be and I'm stitching all four there's the one I did last year for stitch mania Here's this one. I have two more in this series from Prairie Schooler that all have this kind of Halloween theme in the same size and same color scheme. Um, I'm doing them all on the same fabric and I plan to finish them in a wall hanging, like a window pane wall hanging with some quilting fabric sashing in between each one. So it'll look really pretty. I'm excited to get those done, but I'm just slowly working my way through them. So that is Knock Knock. And that's the first thing I worked on. Second one I worked on, I decided to pull this one back out because I was feeling inspired after my whip parade. I worked on Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. Um, just as a reminder, I had all the words in the bottom half done and the border to about here done. I had not done this side of the border on the bottom half. And so that is what I did. I went ahead and finished the bottom half completely, finished all the border on the bottom half. So, hi there, hi Arlene. <laughs> Welcome, first time with live video, isn't it fun? It's kind of fun that I get to talk to you guys while you're like commenting. Um, so this is where it stands, and sorry the lighting is so dim, but it's just kind of cloudy and stormy outside. Um, I'm stitching this on a 32 count, no. I think this is, a, no, this is a 32 count. I'm pretty sure this is 32 count. Uh, a raw gold linen. It's a Zweigart linen in the color raw, but it has gold threads and you can see them really well in this lighting. So it's sparkly. And then I'm stitching them just with a DMC, everything else. Um, I did change, thank you. Yes, isn't that sparkly fabric fun? Thanks, Sylvia. Um, I did change the, the colors for the border. I felt like the colors, it was originally charted for Sullivan's floss and I have DMC. They do provide a DMC conversion um, with the chart, but the colors that they offered as the conversion for the gold, like the yellowy gold border, um, were a little dull for my taste. And so I brightened them up and I changed those to, um, 3820 and 3822 um, for the DMC conversion and I'm pretty happy with how they look. So that is Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. You can see I just have a tiny bit more of border technically before I finish the bottom half but 
for all intents and purposes, the bottom half is done. So next time I pull that out, I'll start moving up and hopefully, I don't wanna make a plan to say this will be done by Christmas this year because whenever I do that, it never happens, but it's not totally impossible to imagine that might be done by this Christmas. So that was Twas the Night. Third one I worked on, um, I pulled out another Stitch Mania start from this year, which was Magic Potion by Sandra Cozzolino. I was just feeling in kind of an autumny, Christmas, Halloween kind of mindset for the last few weeks. I'm not sure why, it's the middle of summer. Excuse me. Um, and so I worked on this. When I started it for Stitch Mania, I got this first corner done. These clouds right over here, the moon, and these two bats. And that's as far as I got for Stitch Mania. And I've done quite a bit more. Well, not quite a bit, but I made good progress. Finished the rest of the top border. So sky and stars and more bats. Those bats are just so cute and fun to stitch. And I got some of the words done. And a frog and a lizard. So right now it says croaking frogs, leaping lizards, and then pum, which will be pumpkin seeds. Um, so that's how far I got on this. I'm stitching this with all the charted colors. It's charted for DMC. Um, this is a 32 count Belfast linen in the color Dirty. It says Weigart linen in the color dirty and I'm stitching two over two as I always do with 32 count. I just wanted to make sure. Yep, 32 count. 32 count Zweigart linen in dirty and that is where Magic Potion stands. So I'll put, I put that one away but I will probably pull that out again in a few months for Halloween stitching. Next thing I worked on was my Sea to Shining Sea um, Little House Needleworks, which was a chart series, a chart pack series. It's a series of six charts that came with the Crescent Colors or Classic Color Works um, Bell Soie silks to stitch them. And the first one, the first chart is a border, and then you get each of these five houses that reflect the different geographical areas of the United States. And last time you saw this, I had the first house done, which is the West Coast, and I had the bottom part of the border done and almost the top border. We stopped about here. So I pulled it back out and I finished the top border. So the border is done, and I started on the next house, which is the Southwest. So there it is. Hi from Sweden. Um, Stitching Becca, welcome from Sweden. Yes, thank you for joining me live. Um, so the top border is done. Bottom border was already done. And you can see there I started on the southwest house with um, some sand and some little desert flowers, probably some cactus flowers, and then a big cactus. There you go. You can see the sand a little better there. It sort of blends in with the fabric, but that's okay. I'm using the recommended fabric for this piece, so it's just the way it's gonna be, which is a 32 count natural raw linen from Zweigart. And I am using the, the Belle Soie silks that came with, love the letters on that one. I know, aren't they beautiful? With that Belle Soie silk, with the um, over dyed, the variation, it's really beautiful. To buy that glad to catch you live thank you for joining me yes it is a beautiful chart highly recommend it the bell Soie silks are a joy to work with they're really lovely and this is a good way to get into silks if you've never stitched with silks or you've never stitched with bell Soie, it's if you do these chart packs they just give you enough to complete the chart so you're not investing tons of money and buying full skeins of every color you need. So it's a great way to kind of dip your toes in the water. If you if you were interested in trying silks or Belle Soie Bell silks specifically, this is a great way to do it. I love the chart. It's really fun. It's totally up my alley with kind of an Americana theme. But this is what the Southwest house will look like when it's done. It's so cute. Love your channel so much. Thank you. Hi from the UK. Wow, we are just super international today. We've got the UK, we've got Russia, we've got Sweden. If you're watching from another country besides the ones I mentioned or besides the US, comment and let me know so we can see how far this is going. I love that. But anyway, that's what the Southwest house will look like. And um, loving it. So got that. 
done on that one. And then the last thing I um, pulled out, I don't have any new starts for this month or for the last few weeks. I really just wanted to keep working on in Canada. Yay for our Canadian brothers and sisters. Hi. Um, I lost my train of thought now. Oh, I didn't want to have any new starts. I wanted to work Australia. Your name is Janelle. Janelle, that's my name. And you spell it the way I spell it. I go by Nell as my nickname and that's what most people call me. But that's my name is Janelle and just spelled exactly that way. So welcome, you have the best name ever. <laughs> um, anyway, I was really feeling the urge to work on this. I don't know why because again, it's not autumn, but I really wanted to pull it out and I'm so glad I did. Guys, I pulled out my beloved Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. You guys know how much I love this chart, how much I'm loving stitching on this. This is my first time working with NPI silks. I'm I'm stitching this in all the charted um, colors, the NPI silks plus one thread gatherer silk, I think in Rusty Amber, I think is the one thread gatherer silk. I have never stitched on 40 count before. This is stitched on 40 count. I've never stitched with the NPI silks before. Um, and I love this. I've been watching a lot of people on FlossTube recently who are kind of strictly 40 count stitchers who just stitch on 40 count almost exclusively and just in silks. And I can totally understand why they go that direction. It is a dream. I was talking to my husband about it one night. I'm like, I'm sorry, honey, this is bad news for my stitchy budget that I'm in love with these MPI silks. And he's like, well, what's different about them? And I was trying to explain. I'm like, well, they're really soft and the color is so deep and vibrant and rich. I, and I was trying to figure out how to describe it to him. So finally I came up with this analogy. DMC is like a Toyota, a Toyota car, okay? Nice, comfortable, reliable, not too crazy expensive, easily accessible and easily available. Um, works so well. We're so lucky to have DMC so available to us, especially here in the United States where it's not too terribly expensive. Okay, DMC is like a Toyota. And then you just for the heck of it decide to go for a ride in a Mercedes Benz or a Lexus or whatever, a Ferrari, whatever your luxury car of choice is. And you know that Toyota works great and it just is so dependable for everyday use. And then you ride in that luxury car and you're like, man, this is nice. That is what it's like. The Toyota works great. It is so good and it's dependable and it works great. But that luxury car, man, just rides so smooth. It's so comfy and luxurious. I, that's the best analogy I can come up with. So enough talking, let's show you what I did. Last time you saw this, I was working on this top border piece and I had, I was, I started over on this side and I had like, halfway through the second pumpkin. I had the first pumpkin all done and everything this direction. And I had half of this second center pumpkin done. And I finished the top border. There it is. Uh, there we go. So I finished the top section. It is done and you can see I made the tiniest little start on my first square um, in Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. So there you go. It's beautiful. I still love stitching on it. I, I'm feeling really motivated to stitch on this now that the top border is done because I feel like I've like gotten my first mini finish in this project because this project's gonna take a hundred bajillion years. I mean, it's giant and it's on 40 count, <laughs> but who cares? It's beautiful. You can see I'm using my um, Hocus Pocus needle minder. They're upside down. Um, it just felt appropriate since it's an autumn piece. There we go. There's my Hocus Pocus needle minder. And that is Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. I am stitching this on the recommended fabric, which is, hold on. I know it's Lakeside Linens. I know it's 40 count. I think it's Sand Dune. 40 count Sand Dune. Yep. 40 count Sand Dune Linen from Lakeside Linens using one strand of NPI silk um, over two. So I'm stitching one over two 
on 40 count sand dune by Lakeside Linens using all the recommended NPI silks and the one thread gatherer silk. So that is Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. I'm loving it. I totally get why people get obsessed with 40 count and with the silks and that's just bad news for my stitchy budget. Sorry, honey. He just laughed. He thought it was funny. Like, whatever. <laughs> It's your stitchy budget. You can spend it however you want. I'm just not going to be able to buy as much if I decide to go that route. Let's talk about, um, I have a little bit of a haul. Well, it's a pretty significant haul. It's just not anything super interesting. It's all fabric. I found um, a couple of fabric sales on Stash Unload, and I found a lot of, um, like, a lot not a lot, like much, but a lot, meaning a bundle of linens being sold on eBay for a really good price. And so I did some fabric stashing, which is kind of unusual for me. The last time I bought fabric, not intending it for a specific project, was when I bought that big, huge um, lot on eBay, my big, huge stack of the fabrics that all came in the envelopes. So this, it was kind of fun to, to um, purchase some more fabric. And so, um, in this stack, they're all cashel linen. They're all Zweigart cashel linen. Um, so they're all 28 count. My favorite is 32 count, but 28 count is great. And the, they were such a good deal that I couldn't pass them up. So um, let's go this way. So this one, I'm going to pull it out of the bag. Some of these were bagged up by the sellers. This is a 28 count fat quarter of cashel linen in the color Millennium Blue, which is showing up really blue in this lighting. It's not quite this bright. It's a little more denim colored, a little dustier of a blue, a little less vibrant um, than it's showing up. So that was a fat quarter in that millennium blue. This one, I, I won't take this one out of the bag. This is 28 count cashew linen in the color Dirty, which is one of my favorites. And this is a fat half. So came in a bag, but it's just, there you go. Sorry for the reflection. There you go. It's a dark neutral, kind of a dark tan. And that was a fat half. The rest of these are all fat quarters. We have a 28 count um, cashew linen in the color cobblestone. Hi from Scotland. Kelly, that's awesome. Hi, welcome. So this is a little bit different of a tone than the dirty. I don't know if you can see. The dirty's got a little bit more greeny brown, more of a khaki color, where the cobblestone has more gray, almost like a purpley gray undertone, but it's still a neutral. So that's cobblestone, that's a fat quarter. Then we have a fat quarter of the color putty, which is a nice neutral. You guys know I love my neutrals and I don't really do hand dyes. So these are all solid color neutrals. And then this one is um, a lakeside linens in the color exemplar, which most everyone knows. Um, it's not vintage, so it doesn't have the modeling and it's not the light exemplar. A lot of people stitch on light exemplar. This is just the regular and also a fat quarter. So that was that as far as fabric. That's it. I don't have any other things that I bought to show you. Um, but the last thing I wanted to talk about was some plans. Um, if you have are not, what it would just started raining. Well, there's the reason for all the clouds. <laughs> um, if you are not watching Julie McConnell on Floss Tube, then you need to. Julie McConnell, hi Julie, if you're watching this or if you come and watch later, hi. Um, she owns Reflections Framing and Stitching in Nebraska, and she has recently started a floss tube channel a couple months ago and posts updates about what she's working on, but she also shows projects and pieces that she frames for some of the stitchers who visit her shop, and so you get to see a lot of beautiful stitching. Highly recommend her channel. She's a total sweet lady. Love her to death. I wish I lived closer to her shop because she would totally be my LNS, but Nebraska is about an eight hour drive away from me. So we do drive through Nebraska when we go visit my family. So maybe next time we make that drive, I'll have to stop by her shop, but really sweet lady, love watching her channel. So I highly encourage you to go find her, Julie McConnell. Um, and she recently did a giveaway, which I did not win, but her giveaway was um, a Plum Street sampler chart with all of the things necessary to stitch it. And she gave three of them away. Love Julie, and uh, now she's my LNS. She will ship you anything. Don't tell me that, Anna. 
don't tell me that she'll ship things. Uh, anyway, yes, love Julie. Um, but she, as to enter her giveaway, she had everybody put down what their favorite Plum Street sampler chart was or what was the first Plum Street sampler they ever stitched. And I have still never stitched a Plum Street sampler. I am ashamed to admit. I've had several of them in my stash for a while. I have the freebie 12 Days of Christmas that she gave out with Dan the Man. I know, wasn't that cute? I, her husband's a darling man too. And he's stitching Map of Hawk Run Hollow. Her husband stitches and he's stitching Map of Hawk Run Hollow and it's beautiful. Hey from Texas. Hi, Brit Stitch. Um, anyway, I have, you know, the 12 Days of Christmas freebie that Plum Street samplers. I know, McKenna, isn't it embarrassing? I've had them in my stash for forever. But this is the one I've had in my stash that I've been dying to start for forever. And it is Liberty's Welcome. Can't tell. So it's Liberty's Welcome. This is what it looks like. And hi, Nell from England. Hi, Sheila. Welcome. Thanks for joining me live. Um, this is what it looks like, and it's beautiful. I'm obsessed. I don't usually go for like a prim style, but now I'm stitching that Autumn at Hawkburn Hollow, and now I want to stitch this. I think my taste is shifting that way. Not hugely. I'm not about to give up all my other stitching and just do like reproduction samplers, but I'm, I'm understanding more why they draw people so strongly. And this is kind of that style. Um... I love it for a couple of reasons. It's really vibrant and colorful, which is kind of my big hang up with a lot of the prim stuff is it's just too dull and muted for my taste. This one is nice and bright and vibrant. It's very um, patriotic, which is totally me. Um, I tend to go for a lot of kind of Americana patriotic patterns. Um, and the thing that's been holding me back with this guy, first of all, it's enormous. It's huge. I think of most of the continents represent. I know. We just need, I think we need someone from Asia, and we need someone from Africa, and we need someone from, well, Antarctica. I don't think we're going to get Antarctica, but I think, and South America. I haven't seen South America yet. I'm stitching Liberty's Welcome. Kimberly, with the NPI silks. Yes, that was one of my, one of my hangups, is that I was originally intending to stitch this in DMC because the NPI silks are pricey, but I've been stitching this with the MPI, MPI silks and now I'm thinking, no. If I'm gonna, gonna invest the time it's gonna take to stitch this thing, because it's huge. The stitch count on this is 349 by 211. Okay, it's gigantic. If I'm gonna invest the time to stitch this massive bad boy, I think I wanna do it in the silks. I do. I think I do. And I think I want to stitch it on 40 count. <laughs> I'm turning into one of those. Oh gosh. Not for everything. For this, I think I want to stitch this on 40 count. One over two. It's charted to be on 36 count um, with one over two, but I'm not sure if I want to do 36 count. I think I want to do 40 count because I'm enjoying my um, Autumn and Hawker and Hollow so much. I think I want to stitch this on 40 count. Which means I got to kit this bad boy up. I got to buy the MPI silks. Unfortunately, I went through, there's not a lot of crossover. They have the list of the silks back here. There's not a lot of crossover between this one and this one. The colors are very different. And so unfortunately, I think maybe three, yep, only three of the colors in this do I already have because of this chart. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to buy some silks and I'm gonna have to buy a new fabric. From seeing the hands on your clock move on in real time, isn't that strange? I know, you guys can like follow along with how long this is taking me. We're at 33 minutes. Wrap it up, Nell. Um, I originally had bought this to stitch that on. This is a 32 count um, ivory joblin, okay? And hi, Sherry! <laughs> you finally caught me live, Sherry Burkett. Um, I originally intended to stitch it on this. It's a 32 count ivory joblin, and you're stitching on 36 count wren. I do like wren. Uh, it's not too intense of a modeling, so it's pretty. But anyway, now this will, I guess, go back into my stash, and I gotta kit this baby up. And so I was actually going to ask you all what you might suggest for the linen for this. It's stitched on, um, this one is R&R &R Reproductions fabric in Legionnaire Latte. 
Um, but I'm open to other options. I think it does need to be a light neutral, not white, because there's some white stitching up here that I don't want to get lost. There's like all these little sheepies up there and the head of the bald eagle. I don't want the bald eagle to look like he's headless. So it needs to be a light neutral when you go to Stitcher's Paradise, take the chart with you. I actually might do that, McKenna. Like, really. I might take this with me when I go to Vegas in August and just go and look at their fabrics that they have. Um, but I need a light neutral that will pop the colors well and we won't lose the house because the house is also done in a really light gray, so that needs to pop. But I also don't want it to be too dark um, because it's such a light, bright, happy kind of sampler. And so I need ideas. I'm not opposed to some light modeling, okay? No crazy intense hand dyes. Some of the Picture This Plus stuff gets a little intense. Um, Ren is usually okay. Ren, when I see Ren, I think, okay, that's not too intense. Um, but a lot of the, the Lakeside Linen, like um, vintage fabrics are okay. They're not too in, in, intense in their modeling. So if you have suggestions of what you think this might look good on, I want it to be a 40 count. I'm gonna buy the silks. That means I get another piece of um, Jobelin to put in my stash though. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys. Um, having a great time. Been really enjoying stitching on the things that I've been working on. I don't intend to have any new starts anytime soon. I'm still trying to work on getting some things done because I, I think I'm down to 18 whips now, but still that's a little more than I typically like to have. So I'd like to kind of get some more done on more things. Pro properly primitive from under the sea. Ooh, thank you, Claudia. I'll have to go look at, at Leslie's fabrics because most of her fabrics are more brightly colored, but I know she has some neutrals and properly primitive might work. I'm gonna have to, and she can do it less modeled. That's true, if I went with a custom dye, like if I went with a hand dyer, they could do a custom piece for me that's not as intensely modeled. That's a good idea. If I can't find something else, that might be what I end up doing. So thank you, Claudia. Um, what was I saying? Oh, don't wanna have any new starts necessarily. I'd like to keep finishing up more things. 18 is still a lot of whips for me and I think I'd like to get that down. Um, hi, Solar Stitches, yay, you caught me live. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I look forward to seeing a lot of you at the bag sale on Wednesday. If you have questions, you can pop them down here or you can go join my group and post in the group. And I'm usually pretty good about getting back to people pretty quickly. It's gonna be a fun sale. It's gonna be crazy, so get ready. And I hope you're enjoying your stitching. Um, take care and I will talk to you guys really soon, okay? Bye.